Hello everyone, this is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed and today we are going to be building some amazing metal sawhorses. These here are designed specifically for the metal worker who always has interesting projects come in the door that sometimes are humongous and so I was trying to design these where they were modular and could be used for any of the projects you have and save you time every day and just increase the precision and productivity of your metal working shop. So I put a bunch of thought into making them where you could add accessories to them by having the whole pattern on both ends where you can add things like a vise or you can turn them into a giant work table. And you could of course add bottom up levelers if your shop's uneven and you could get a very precise work area set up. You can also of course fix your like a right angle piece to use as a, a fixed stream point um, for those strange projects that might need that. And they are extremely heavy at 165 pounds so there's no wiggle or play in them that you can feel and allows you to have a good, strong, stable work surface for all of your big beam and heavy projects and a, a great place to work off of for many years to come. So I hope you guys find this video incredibly helpful. There are going to be plans available if you're interested in, that are downloadable for a few bucks that will give you the dimensions and material lists and whatnot so that it saves you a bit of time if you're going to put these together. So you guys enjoy and have a great one. I'm not sure how I live without these for so long. Most all the cutting is being done with the LS 1800 miter bandsaw. I came across the company when I was going to the Hobart Institute of Welding Technology taking their structural and pipeline nine month course. Their belt grinders that they had set up in the school were all LS. So I looked into the company. Turns out they make bandsaws and drill presses and all their products seem to be incredibly well built and really good. So I ended up getting this 1800 model and it miters fit. 50 degrees in both directions and can cut some pretty substantial size pieces of metal in there. And of course they have um, a bit smaller bandsaws and a whole lot bigger capacity. It uses an 11 foot long blade so it takes quite a good while before you'll end up dolling it or wearing it out. Of course there's a lot of blade selections out there depending what you're cutting and what you're doing. I tend to use a fine tooth blade for most everything. It'll of course be a bit slower on the heavier stuff. You'll have to cut a bit at a slower cutting speed, um, but it'll leave a nice clean finish and you don't have to be switching out your blades a lot. Now if you're cutting a lot of big material, of course you're going to want to put on a hefty blade, but for the most part I cut a lot of tubing, so I tend to just leave a fine tooth blade on there and it does an incredible job. So now that we have all the pieces just about finished being cut, I fitted them up how they're going to go and everything's looking good so I'm ready to put bevels on everything um, to ensure really good penetration on the weld so let's get on with that. Having a quality precision welding table really makes all the difference on your metalworking projects as well as having a good selection of clamps and of course magnets nowadays um, are a huge help. If you're interested in building a welding table like this one, check out the video of it on the channel. A 
I decided to put the saw horses together with shielded metal arc welding or stick welding, primarily because um, it's good practice and it's extremely strong and comes out really well, done correctly, and it's always good to stay in good practice with shielded metal arc. You could, of course, um, use gas metal arc welding or MIG welding as most people refer it, and it would do a perfectly good job as well. Of course, it adds quite a bit of work to make the legs detachable from the beam um, on the sawhorses, but there is an advantage is that you could make smaller sawhorses by just simply drilling holes in a smaller piece of beam, and you could have smaller ones, or if you wanted bigger sawhorses, you could use a longer piece of beam. So it does make it where there is some versatility there, but if you know that you're not going to need to change the lengths of your sawhorses, you could save quite a bit of time by just simply welding the legs right to the beam. Right here I'm using the Mag Switch 165 for tack up. It does an incredible job of holding things where you want them to be while you get things adjusted and um, tacked in place. The only downside really you have with magnets when welding is it does affect the arc. So especially if you have a way oversized magnet for the thickness of metal you're welding, the extra force field will mess with the arc. I've had a situation where that when I struck the arc, it threw the molten metal back at me and I got showered in sparks. Um, but that was due to trying to use a way oversized magnet for what I was trying to do. And so having a good selection of magnets is really the key. If you have the right magnet for what you're doing, it should work perfectly well. And the, um, the Fjord's field affects more, it seems, um, shielded metal arc welding and gas metal arc welding or gas tungsten arc welding don't seem to be affected quite as badly by the magnetic field in my experience. <laughs> Of course, when drilling long pieces on a drill press, it really does help to have a support stand. I have an adjustable support stand, which makes this go a lot easier. Of course, if you had a mag drill, that might be even easier if you're working by yourself, especially.
could definitely recommend to use grade 5 or better fasteners for putting the legs on to ensure a really strong outcome. So right here I'm working on the vice mount for the bolt-on accessory for the sawhorse. Of course you can make any kind of bolt-on accessory and that's what's really kind of fun about these horses. Plasma cutting is being done with the Everlast Power Plasma 102. It's a 100 amp unit and it uses, of course, the IPT style uh, consumables. I have an IPT 80 torch on there. I have also the IPT 100 for the CNC um, table that I'm still working on. I've been pleasantly surprised with how well the Everlast Plasma Cutter works. Of course, I would have preferred a Hypertherm Plasma Cutter, but the price tags on them were, uh, didn't allow for me to get the American made. found this video helpful for more content like this remember to subscribe to creativity unleashed and if you're interested in the plans they'll be available down in the description section and you guys have a great one thanks for watching